Kids is mean. a Bye. family Bye. radio Bye. station. Bye. It means so much to me to hear them in the morning. I'm on the road, 545, headed to Kaiser and Richmond, and they keep me laughing. I know people think I'm crazy in my car, though. Okay. Today on Spotlight with Shonda Scott, we're taking you behind the scenes to KBLX Studios so you can find out what our favorite radio personalities do from early in the morning to late in the day. We're getting all the scoop on radio legend Elroy Smith, who is the program director for KBLX. We talked to Jerry Dove, we talked to Miranda Wilson, Sterling James, Kimmy Taylor, Tony, and the Dream Team. We talked to everybody to find out behind the scenes what happens with the magic behind the music at KBLX Studio. So come join us, Spotlight with Shonda Scott. Kimmy, tell us, you've been here at KBLX, you were a producer, and now yes. you're on-air personality, so what was that transition like for you, and, and you know, what, give us a little history of KBLX. Well, I've been with KBLX 17 years. Um, well, that's what a lot of people don't know. Wow. Um, I've been, I was the producer for 12 that. of those, and then, um, or 14 of those, I guess I should say. And then um, when the opportunity came to then, and we knew that we were going to be revamping the morning show here, I put my name in the hat. So they get two for one. Are you producing? Because we see you over here on the computer and on the air talking. Are you? It's, yeah, it, yeah, multitasking. You yeah. have to. I mean, this is a big you show. It's a out. full show. So, right. you know, while you can't take your eyes off the baby, as I like to say. So, you know, somebody has to be on the call. Somebody has to make sure we're staying on the air. You know, it's a living, breathing thing. Well, you you have all this chemistry here because like you woke up, I was like I'm giving up I'm a morning person, but I just was like, what is my energy like? As soon as we come in the room, it's just all this energy. Mm -hmm. So how did that whole chemistry come about? Because you never worked together, and then you were just thrown together, and automatically you just had like this, you know, on air love affair. I think because he's a complete hybrid. You know, Tony mm -hmm. Sco, he's a stand-up comedian, but he also has 17 years in radio, and we've just created our own subtle language with body language and things on the air where we just know who's going, but he's the quarterback of the right. show. And you came from Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, with I came Elroy? from Chicago, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, Elroy was here first, right. and then he brought me out here. The thing that makes us successful is our, our history in radio and our, uh, you know, our experience. So uh, it's all about professionalism. Right. So no matter what we're getting into, we know to keep it professional. Um, and it, we just fell into place, like like Kimmy does. She edits the show. Uh, I'm the conductor, basically, to just keep everything on time to, you know, make sure everybody knows where we're going and what we're doing. And, you know, we come up with the discussions and things of that nature. And we just fell into it, fell into it kind of quickly, and it just gets better. It's pretty cool to be able to come to another place and fall right into community right. service because that's what we need to do. Yeah, and we need you, and we love you. You know, you're like our family. And that, then I love the behind the scenes because some people who don't know your faces, when they know your voice and they see your face, you feel like they they can see you <laughs> hug you. Oh, yeah. I've known them for years. Yeah. So we love KBLX, and we thank you for the behind the scenes. Oh. And we just. Uh, I mean, you're just like family to us. Absolutely, so. you, no, you so are. Much. And yeah. you know, KBLX has been here now, 30, pushing 39 wow. years. You know, and the call letters have never changed, the formats never changed. So we are blessed, and it works both ways. Right. You know, it works both ways. Yeah, I got to thank the Bay Area for just taking me in as their little rusty cousin. <laughs> right, right, right. From you in Chicago, honor. I just came here. I had no clothes, had a little bag of clothes, and y'all like, come on in. We gonna feed you and take care of you. So, thank you, Bay Area. Thank you. Well. Thanks for the love, you all. Oh, we're still covering the Bay Area with our Chicago connection. Now, how yeah. long did you? How long you been in radio? I've uh, been in radio since '98. Oh, okay. Good yeah. wow. So yeah, fresh out of school, um, got an opportunity to uh, come and um, do some production. Um, I did the Dream Team thing. Um, theme song, and I did Antoine Davis' theme song. Yeah, because you like the mix master. Yeah. Everybody has a theme song. I'm Everybody like, I want a theme understand. song. This guy yeah. is probably one of the greatest music minds, right. uh, production-wise, parodies, creativity yeah. out. Co-creator, yes. Creator, so, I mean. Sterling has a theme thanks, song. Uh, thanks, Sterling. <laughs> <laughs> so you write the music, then you lay it out on the computer, put yeah, the sound together. Yeah, put the lyrics together. So when the Dream Team theme started to take off here, and um, Antoine Davis's um, theme song, then the other stations in the building started inquiring, like, where are you getting this from? Who's <laughs> right. doing this? Like Who's me, doing like, that? Right. Have the theme song. right. And so um, 
the opportunity presented itself for me to come and do what I do for him mm -hmm. for all the stations oh, cool. in the So building. what other stations are you working with? Like you work with KBLX, um, Intercom has a whole... The Game, okay. um, Q102, um, KFOX, mm -hmm. um, and Coit. All the stations that's in this building, I do production and um, imaging for. Right. And it's amazing, like, uh, like the, the themes become songs, like... We can't go mm -hmm. nowhere out in the street. When people see us, they don't be like, hey, Dream Team. They be like, right. Dream Team in the morning. So you'll be able to write mine now. You just kind of vibe a person and well, you like kind of come up with it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. We in the bay. We was born in Ray. I've been in radio for 32 years. That's yes. amazing. Yes. So all the computer wasn't going on then? Oh, no. So how did you transition to the computer age? In the social media, I mean, that's like, because that adds to your longevity if you can shift like that. I have a degree in recording arts. Okay. So signal processing, sound reinforcement, uh, signal flow, technology, engineering to mm -hmm. a degree. And I got that back in the 80s. So um, along with being a jock and being a voice and music and all of that, it is so important that you know the technology mm -hmm. and that you stay with it and that you move with it. Social media is a whole nother thing because that's a whole like moral compass that you kind of have to run with and follow mm -hmm. and steer and, and you need to be able to speak to your listeners but also stay true to yourself. And we are responsible for posting on social media like almost every half hour. So doing my radio show is always connected both. with the it's, social it's media always connected with the social media if i'm talking about on the radio it has to be on social media if it's on social media and it's trending i have to be talking about it on the radio but the good thing about the internet too is now that made you that brought you into our homes phys, you know physically like we see you we heard your voice on the radio but then when you see you like we feel like you know you when yeah. we see you so in the community you all are like part of our family that's what we were talking about kblx how it's just yeah. connected to the community in this yeah. way well, thank you. I, ho I hope so. It, it has made it a far more visual medium. It's not just an audio medium or audible medium. Um, it's it's a trip because we've always been able to just kind of hide behind the scenes. Right. I don't wear makeup on the radio usually. It's like Shonda, you got Shonda Scott coming today. in. I've got to put the gloss on. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm, I've always been part of the community. Mm -hmm. I was born and raised in the Bay Area. I've had my entire 32-year radio career here in the Bay Area. I, I'm, I'm in the community. I work in the community. I live in the community. I'm raising my daughter in the community. My husband's from the community. And so, yeah, to be able to take it from just being here where I serve you with the music and the giveaways to be able to actually, you know, see and, and see right. more of, of our listeners one-on-one -on -one is, is, is a gift. Yes, we are so excited to have you back on air with the Gospel Sunday, Inspirational Sunday show. Uh, just curious, what brought you back to KBLX? This show. What brought you to just the this show? This show, right? yeah. I had hung up my headphones. Right. You know, after uh, nearly 20 years. And Rennell, as well as I, mm -hmm. had hung up our headphones and figured there was nothing else that would bring any excitement to us personally. Right. And uh, when I heard one Sunday morning, there was inspirational music on KBLX, but no host. No host. And I said, wow, well, that's interesting. And I made a few phone calls, inquired, no, there isn't a host, but they're looking for one. So that made me have to put together an air check. Which, right. That's how we get gigs in okay. this business. Okay. And I had the humility to do it because I had never done a show of this nature. Mm. But I had worked around the format, you know, being around the old KDIA and K-Soul. I grew up listening to Sheila Robinson right. and a lot of different... Anyway, I thought about it and I said, you know what, people need something on Sunday. They need to be inspired. Mm -hmm. And I personally had gone through a lot with my sister battling a terminal case of breast cancer, mm -hmm. and my mom got very, very ill. And I knew what it meant to be at home on Sunday, wanted to get to worship and couldn't be there, right. but worshiping in your home. Right, right. And music will help you get there. That's and true. anyway, the opportunity opened, and Elroy called me. I sent the air check, and within like two weeks, I got a phone call. And there was just a possibility, because mm -hmm. he said he heard something in my voice. And I was like, hmm, wow, that seed is planted. Mm -hmm. Let God do the rest. Right. And Elroy is just amazing. Long story short, he uh, said we wouldn't probably be able to do this show until January. I said, oh, OK. But in my heart, I said, all right. We got right, January. Right, right. Called like a week later, can you go on this Sunday? Huh, yes. <laughs> but there's no place like home. Mm -hmm. And there's no place like 
talking to the people that are very instrumental to making you who you are. Right. So Elroy, you know, it's like we're building something mm -hmm. new. It's a bit different than the shows that I grew up listening to in that we're not preaching to you. Mm -hmm. We're not telling you how to live your life. We're just bringing as much inspiration as we can to your life and realizing that people know a whole lot more than you think they know. Right, right. And God knows. Right. <laughs> so. And you just are loving on them. I mean, it's just inspirational, like you said. Welcome to Spotlight with Shonda Scott, where each week we bring you the best and the brightest, the movers and the shakers, and the hidden gems from all over the Bay. Let us shine a spotlight on your business. Sponsorship opportunities are available. For more information, visit us at spotlightwithshonda.tv. So with the quiet storm, uh, you know, I always say, you know, it's it's, you know, grown as sexy and as sophisticated. And I really hold on to that sophistication piece because um, I I thrive off of being a gentleman, not only to just women, but to men as well. You know, I open the door for my brothers if I need to, you know, and the quiet storm is a piece of me. It's a part of me. I live it. I don't even have to think about it. It's, I wake up thinking about my show. Right. You know, I own it. And this it's, is your passion. It's my passion. And I love to pass on my passion. To and the now you're here, the voice now of the I'm quiet here. storm. Yes, yes. So what, what is that like? Because, you know, we were saying about KBLX, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a big community oh, organization. Yes. And we feel like KBLX is part. Yes. We grew up on KBLX. Yes. You're part of our family. That's right. You know, multi-generations are listening to mm -hmm. it. So what does that mean for you, like KBLX in the community? It's, it's when they, you know, when, when Elroy Smith um, gave me the quiet storm, the, the weight on my shoulders, I felt it was going to be extremely heavy because traditionally this station was called the quiet storm. Yeah, People right. know it to be the quiet storm. So when, when I adopted the show, I made it my baby. I owned it. And my personality, I wanted it to shine. I wanted people to get to know me through not only the music, but through Facebook Live and also sharing my platform you know, with other individuals who are doing huge things in the community. I didn't want to keep this to myself. I wanted to share it and give other people who are not recognized or who do not have a large platform to, to shine, you know, and that's been my goal is to share this platform and make it more than just the music, make it the people who request the music, who keeps this station alive. The community is a big part of what makes KBLX special to us mm -hmm. in the Bay Area. Well, so just talk, tell us more about like how you own that role and how you make that happen for the station. Well, I am the director of community affairs for all five of our stations. Oh. I'm also the promotions director for KBLX. And KBLX is probably the most community-driven station of the five. Uh, we call our listeners our family. Uh, our family mm -hmm. always wants to help each other. Anything that comes up in, in the East Bay, South Bay, any part of the Bay Area, we want to be there. Elroy and I had wanted to do something to help out one of these major mm -hmm. uh, disasters, disasters that's happening. Right. World, you know, pick one. Yeah. And so we decided, let's start with you saying, uh, work our way east. And uh, Kimmy had this great idea about collecting diapers. Right. It was just an idea. I mean, I learned that the Red Cross doesn't supply diapers, nor does any disaster relief agency. You know, if you're on food stamps, they don't cover diapers. I'm like, this is the most oh. basic need of any human being, you know. And like I said, anybody in a diaper is the most vulnerable person mm -hmm. on the planet. So, like you said, I had an idea. The vision was to get a plane, but, you know... Trucks are very, very, right. we can get trucks around here mm -hmm. between the Port of Oakland. So I started calling around and then I told Elroy and I told Tony and I told Jerry Dove, I'm like, well, what if we got, did this thing? And they believed in it, right. you know, and, and they said, okay, Kim, it just take, took life. So, you know, once you're surrounded by people who all have their hearts in the right place, you know, that momentum was effortless. And the more people started talking about it, the more they believed in it. And it just grew and grew. Well, all the powerhouses are at right. this station now, it seems like. It's right, like right, the band right. is back and all the players are all in the house yeah, with KBLX. Right. With Elroy Smith coming with all his history in the radio industry, uh -huh. what is that? How, what, how is that 
helped and changed uh, KBLX? Um, you know, KBLX has always been, as Jerry said, that community station, that that driving force of uh, of urban uh, folks here in the Bay Area, and. You know, KBLX kind of, it went away from that for a little bit because the evolution of music has changed so much. And so Elroy, you know, he came here, he, you know, took a look at the landscape and realized that, you know, that's true. So we kind of, you know, came back, you know, scaled back a little bit to what the Bay Area's palette happens to be. And he was a big part of that. KBLX is absolutely back and seeing all, I guess I can say some of these new guys, right. well, for me, new guys on the radio from the Tony Scholes and Tony Roberts and uh, Armand and some of these new guys who are coming in who are fitting right into the pocket of what KBLX happens to be. Right. So You're right. KBLX is back. Yeah, Spotlight with Sean hey. Scott. We're Who behind the scenes at KBLX <laughs> Intercom talking about Elroy Smith, his legendary history and what he's bringing to KBLX all the behind the scenes. And who comes in behind the scenes? Tommy Davidson is going to be in town doing uh what he does when i first um got with him now when was this when does this, this was go? about Take us back 91. okay he was trying to get comics involved in radio tom Jordan had just left mm. and he was trying to convince the station that stand-up comedians can lock down radio because mm -hmm. they can write their own stuff and they can have a producer in studio and start this whole movement right where you can have comedy in the morning and it's more entertaining right. with a name. So uh, my history, I always wanted to get into entertainment. I went to the radio station, they gave me a commercial to read, I fumbled over the commercial. By then I had dropped out of high school, but I was able to get into college by submitting a, a, a reference letter from a minister and from uh, a politician. So the school in Boston said, oh, we'll accept you because of these two letters, but we're going to be closing in a year and a half. So, so you had to graduate in a year and a half? Yes, yes. <laughs> so I had to do nine courses during my last semester in order to graduate with an associate's degree right. uh, in broadcast journalism. So my career started professionally in Boston. I went on to Dallas, um, Chicago, uh, Greenville, South Carolina. And I got a call out of the blue, but it was a blessing from the president of the radio division for Anacom saying, would you like to come to San Francisco? So I said, I would love this opportunity. And uh, looking back, it's been one of my greatest career decisions ever. Yeah. So just tell, tell me about how Renell came back to the station, because she and Miranda were ones that I think we're just like, we're right. done, we'll do something else now. When I was in Chicago, I remember following KMEL, mm -hmm. just reading up oh, on really? radio stations uh, throughout the country. And I remember seeing a commercial um, that said, word has it on the street that KMEL, blah, blah. I'm like, who is that lady? I was just so mesmerized mm -hmm. by that lady. So I became familiar with her name, never have met her before. But when I came here, I said, where is this lady Rennell? Everyone's like, well, she's no longer on the air. She was on a station called Kiss, and she's sort of not doing anything in radio. So I invited her to come to the radio station, and I said, Rennell, I want to do something with you. I just don't know what it is. We had a meeting, decided on the name Soul School Sunday right, instead of right. Old School Sunday. Right, right. It's Soul. We wanted to find out the change, what impact you had, because you could tell when you came there was a change. Right. And just you brought, I was just telling Miranda, it's like you brought the team back, <laughs> the band back together again. So all our favorites are in one house. And we know it's a lot to do with you and what you bring in your history in the industry. But I just want to find out more before you get into it, like these wall, the wall, the yeah. Hall of Fame. What right. are all these and what do they mean to you in your career? To answer your question, um, Record companies um, back in the day, their budgets were so huge mm -hmm. that they always wanted to express to program directors how much they appreciate them by helping to generate success for their artists. So these are what you call platinum or gold albums. Okay. You know, all of these artists sold over uh, thousands and thousands of copies. So they're like, oh, okay, let's reach out to the program directors that helped to start right. uh, the success of a given album. Right. And that's what all of these uh, represent. 
to talk about that success. I yeah. saw the new edition film on right. BT that talked about their history and yeah. that there's a scene where I found <laughs> out it was your actual voice in the scene because you launched that whole Candy Girl, which launched their career. I put it on the air. The phone calls went bananas. Why? Really? Because you're playing a song from the neighborhood guys. Uh, people had never heard of them before. They did a few little um, um, talent shows, but it wasn't uh, of a national uh, scale. Uh, so I put this song on. I ended up playing it several times. I saw the reaction from you know the listeners calling in, and we continued to play it. And then as time went on, it evolved from Boston to other major markets, and it just continued to flourish. Well, you're still bringing that whole magic here to uh, to the Bay Area now, yeah. because just like the Dream Team, that like Kimmy had been behind the scenes right. for a long time. And now to bring her and a comedian from Chicago <laughs> and somebody else right. in, and then they can la they connect. Like, how do you put that energy together and make that fit work? You know, anytime you do something regular, mm. it doesn't stand out. Mm -hmm. So my heart said, let's do something that will grab attention. So Kimmy is here, great content. She's the nice person on the show. I said, you know what, I need to build this show to make it compelling. So we reached out to Tony Schofield uh, in Chicago. He and I worked together in Chicago. I said, Tony, I, I need a quarterback to, to move this show. So I brought Tony in and, hmm, I need someone that's insane. So we reached out to Tony Roberts. So you have a quarterback, you have the insanity of uh, Tony Roberts, then you have, you know, the person of reason, which is Kimmy. And let's just go ahead and put it all together and see what happens. In addition to that, I said, you know, we need something to mesmerize the listeners or a hook. So we um, had some jingles made. Well, I was going to say, you even yeah. have theme music. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. We love that. I said, I need something to go with this music, something that people will end up singing along to. Right. The music, dream team in, in the, the morning. morning. <laughs> up, uh, mm. Dream team in the morning. Wake up, wake up. I'm like, this is it. Everybody can play Luther Vandross. Mm -hmm. Everybody can play New Edition. Everybody can play um, um, Anita Baker. Right. But not everybody can entertain the way, you know, the Dream Team entertained right. Sterling, Antoine, Amand. Right. So the personalities help to build the brand. Right. And that's been my whole mission. Um, when people turn it on, I want them, of course, to enjoy the music. The music is the star. But at the same time, I want them to enjoy the personalities. Right. And I want everybody, whether they are a part-timer, full-timer, to be a star. Right on this radio station. You were the kind of the catalyst behind the the radio show having a comic on the warning show. Well, I was looking for a comedian mm -hmm. and we thought of Steve Harvey. Mm -hmm. This was for, for the afternoon show and then my morning man that replaced Tom Joyner, Doug Banks, ended up going national. So I was losing all of these great people. So the big shift was the morning show. I said, let's do a comedian. I said, there's a guy, Steve Harvey, that we loved. And we put Steve on in the afternoon. So when the morning show opportunity came about, we offered Steve the opportunity right. to take it over. But I was interviewing various comedians, and Tommy Davison was one of the comedians that was really, really high on my list as a finalist. But Steve... In the... Um, in the right. Yeah. Being but that choice. started the whole... I started the whole... Yeah. Genre, really, a right. morning show with this comic yep. and all this energy yep. in the morning. Yep. So before we leave and wrap up, because we could talk to you forever, because there's so many stories and so much information you have. But the the daddy daughter dance. We put the idea on the radio, and it just blew up. Oh, I remember my general manager after it was over and done with. He really got emotional. He said, "Boy." What a great event, and it is a great event, mm -hmm. to bring um, father and daughter together. This is one of the things that KBLX believes in, not just playing music. We want to do community or events that connect family. KBLX means, like, home, the Bay Area. I've grown up listening to it, fell asleep listening to it, so, you know, it's home. 
Stay linked in with us as you follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And remember, hashtag Spotlight with Shonda. How's Elroy fit in all that equation, too? Because he knows the station kind of evolved in a different field. Elroy! Help us. We're hostages. No. We're here to get the scoop on Elroy. Help us. Help us. The thing that I was equating him to is like a Bella Caroli or a, or a Phil Jackson, mm -hmm. where you are so good at what you do and you bring it out of us you know he my level of being an on-air personality is just excelled in the time and he's he brings it out of you he constantly challenges you um there's no such thing as not getting better when you're talking about elroy smith i'm talking about i never met a man that knows radio like he do i mean you think the preacher knows the bible elroy knows radio Elroy's knowledge of music and, and desire for music and to bring the right music to the people is so big. Um, he leads with kindness. He leads with fairness. One of the first things he said to me when he first got here was, you're a star. I want all of you to know that you are stars. It's like working with a great conductor of an orchestra. He knows what the violins do. He knows what the veterans do. He knows what he knows what the youngsters can bring to it. He's the calm, you know. Everybody's hot, but he'll just relax and, and, and he says, you know, it'll be okay. Right. We're gonna get through this, you know. And that that's what we need. Right. You know, because so that's the glue that connects yeah, all of you all. Exactly. Together and you and, and he wants us to all be stars.